Thanks for getting on to Wayne.com for a special Inside the Zone as we get ready for the Turner Conference Finals. And it is the Comets versus the Missouri Mavericks. We thought all season long it might be the Comets versus Evansville, but Missouri blew through them like a buzzsaw in the first round. Coincidentally, uh, they've been off the ice for a while. Ten days, which is two days longer than the Comets were waiting last year to get ready for Rapid City. And it took the Comets about half a game to get their legs back and get it figured out in that game. You got to wonder, I mean, because there's only so much you can do in practice. Practices are nothing, even scrimmages are nothing like games, you know, where people's, they're, they're testing you and they're pushing you and they're hacking you and you're not going to hack a teammate, you know, in practice. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how the Mavericks respond to that. Interesting in the fact that, yes, they're in the Turner Conference, but this is a team the Comets haven't seen much of. They played twice, not since January 15th, but, you know, talking to Colin, they were really close games. A 4-2 game here at the end of December. Thanks to Jerry Festa. And, it, well, and, and it's only 4-2 because of an empty netter. And then a shootout loss at Missouri on January 15th. So really evenly matched in those two regular season games. Well, Missouri's a lot like the Comets. I mean, if you look down the statistical sheets, you look at match 20 goal score for 20 goal score and all that. I mean, it's very, very similar. Um, Missouri's a very high impact team. They're not as rugged or as rough as Rapid City, but they're faster. So they match up with the Comets better that way. You said before the show that you think the Rapid City series prepared the Comets very well for this series with Missouri. Why is that? Well, if you look at what, what were the Comets doing right before that? They just played Dayton and they won the three in a row. But, and before that, they were giving up a lot of odd man rushes. They were kind of lackadaisical a little bit. It's just a different level of intensity. And then it's a different level of intensity again when you play Rapid City in the playoffs because, you know, the two teams hate each other. The Comets are going to they'll probably never go against a, a team with a more hostile crowd, a louder crowd. They'll never go against a team that hits more, that's as physical as the rush or all the controversy from that series, it's doubtful you'll come up against that again. I mean, there's all kinds of factors that that series has really hardened the Comets and seasoned them. All the rookies now know they can survive in big games. They know they can make plays. Whereas before, yeah, I can do that. You don't really know until you try it, until you, know, you look at the buddy next to you and say, oh, hey, yeah, we came through this. We survived. We're better for this. And I think that's what happened with this team. And in talking to the team uh, last night when they arrived back at the Coliseum from that 20-hour bus trip, uh, Nick and some of the other guys made the point, you know, they'd rather not have the 10 days off. Oh, they'd amen. rather be hot. Is that lip service? No. Or is that true? Because they only really have, you know, two days, a day and a half to We've get We've been ready. doing Inside the Zone for, what, three years, four years now? Something like that. Three. And yeah. every week early in the season, we talk about, oh, crap, here's another Friday game. Who knows what they're going to do after sitting around for five days? That you do not want that. Um, I think that is a serious problem for Missouri, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's not a criticism, it's just the reality of it. I mean, you just can't get into the mental frame and the physical frame right away. Comets, like their coach said, are razor sharp right now, and that's what they got to go against. Missouri has to go against. One of the interesting things about last series is the addition uh, of Mike Voskovo late in the season. He had played with Rapid City 54 games before coming over to the Comets after being waived and playing the final two weeks of the regular season. Uh, as the Comets have not played against Missouri, that's not necessarily the case with Voskovo because right. I talked to him last night and he says, uh, I, I, well, being up in Rapid City, I played against him six or eight times already this year. So he's kind of got a feeling. And also, you know, Jerry Festa yeah. has a pretty good feeling too. So what kind of inside info can those guys give? Well, they can, like Jerry said last night when I talked to him, you know, you can, you can uh, uh, give them generals, generalities. Uh, you can't get into too much specifics because if you start thinking out there, okay, Jerry said this, you're dead. You can't think that long. It has to be instinctual. Now, Nick is fantastic at adding that to the data bank so that, you know, he, he internalizes all that stuff. And, you know, he will ask Jerry, you know, about specific shooters. He asked Vascovu about specific shooters in the Rapid City series, and it helped him. Um, you know, you don't want to overload. You just want to be the general things. Like, like what they may do is they may say, Jerry, uh, what does your what does the Missouri coach say about this when you guys are when they're working on that? And then I don't think they would go to the players with that. I think Al and Gary Graham 
would use that as a way to kickstart their research on the scouting report more than going directly to the players with it. They'll, they'll use that as a shortcut to look for things in the tape that they can put into the scouting report and make it simple. Flip side, can Missouri do the same thing with Llewellyn? Sure. Without a doubt. I mean, but he's not going to have quite the grasp that those other two guys have. Well, and think? Jerry played there for two years, too. Um, and he played for the same coach. And you know what? I don't put, I mean, Tristan's a smart kid. I mean, I wouldn't say that it'd be any less. I mean, again, you do not want to get into the finite specifics. Sure. Because it's not going to do you any good. You're just going to confuse them, confuse yourselves. Um, it's more of, keep it simple stupid and just do okay this is what they're doing now we know what to react to it you know and like like and where it'll come in handy is like okay when we're in this situation and we've got and when the Fort Wayne has the lead that's when they run this type of trap or when they're even they run this type of trap so maybe it's quicker recognition versus you know now this is how you beat it you know type of thing speaking in generalities to, to bring it along that theme uh, generally, the comments are better when Brett Smith is on the ice. Yes. That, to me, is the biggest question mark in the series. Is the all-star center going to play? Because I, th I think that neck injury that he suffered maybe maybe a little worse than we originally oh, thought. Oh, I think it's been worse, period. I mean, anybody who saw him walk out of the building on Sunday where he couldn't move his neck up or down, and, I mean, it was bad. I mean, like I said, when he first got hit, he had to sit there and decide if he was going to turn his face around to face his front again. I mean, it was that bad. Um, I tell you what, the way they played in Rapid City, I, I don't. Did anybody think they could win in Rapid City without him? That was going to be a tough one. Oh. You called it though overtime. You said it might be the yeah. first overtime game of the series. And uh, but they did it. I mean, yeah. so I mean, if I had the option, I might hold Smitty as my ace card in the hole, and just give him an extra day, an extra two days, if you can. You know, you lose the first game, then you bring him in. You mm -hmm. know, I mean. Um, just to be careful because he's just going to get stronger too. Yeah. Um, the more rest he gets, the more relaxed he gets. If he gets out there and, and gets hit, he's going to get bumped around. I mean, he's Smitty. He gets bumped around. That's what Smitty does. Yeah. That's what he does better than anybody. He bumps and gets in there, you know? That's why he's good. He only knows how to play one way. So I guess I'd be careful with that. Yeah, if things go well here in Fort Wayne, say they win game one, lose game two, or win both of them, I mean, Holding him out between Saturday and Wednesday, the first game in Missouri, that's a lot of time oh, yeah, lot. to get that net good. So if you can survive with him for out the, without uh, Smitty in the first two games of this series, right. you're going to see a much healthier yeah. Smitty in Missouri. I mean, and does anybody have any doubt that they can win in Missouri? You know, they won two games in Rapid City, the toughest place to play right. in the league probably. I mean, especially for the Comets, the toughest place to play because of the whole situation with the rivalry and – and the animosity and the controversy and all that. I mean, I, I know Missouri has fantastic fans. They do a great job of packing the place. They're loud. They're not Rapid City. Yeah. And, and that's not a knock on Missouri at all because it's. I can't wait to get out there and see it, the atmosphere, because it's everything I've heard is just so great. But it's not Rapid City. Prediction time. How do you see this one playing out? You, you pretty much nailed the last series. So you are the, the Nostradamus of uh, Inside the Zone. I, I would like. I'm Mike. I'm boy. I'm I'm, I'm thinking comets in six, but I would I'm leaning towards five. I mean, just because they are so battle tested after that Rapid City game, and I think they've got a head start here having Missouri with ten days off. I mean, um, you know, Missouri's going to have to raise its level to the comets level essentially at this point, point. Um, and I have no doubt that the Mavericks can do that. But by the time they do that, they might be down two to nothing. Yeah, and with the comments going on the road, then you know where they're so good and so focused and so intense, and Nick is so great on the road. I mean, man, the saves he made at the end of the Rapid City game were just astonishing. But it's like, yeah, okay, Nick did that again. This deciding game of a series, oh, uh, you know, I mean, seen yeah. that, done that, you know, how many times now? You know, I mean, he just he is laser focused right now. I like comments in six. I think they probably win on Friday night. I think having the time off means that uh, Missouri's going to have fresher legs for the back-to-back -back games on Saturday night. Could be. I think maybe if they're going to pull one out here in Fort Wayne, that's the game they're going to pull out. I don't see the Comets winning two of the three in Missouri, so they win one of those and then come back and win it here in game six. Yeah. That's how I predict And the goaltending is going to be so much fun to watch in this series. Charlie Effinger, he was the best goalie in the league the second half. Nick was the best in the first half. And Nick has obviously recaptured that form. And Essinger totally dominated 
Evansville. Just shut him down. Six goals in four games. I mean, he had like a 950 save percentage. This will be fun to watch. Those two go at it. I mean, and it will be fun to watch. We'll have it all covered. I know you'll have it covered on your blog, tailing the comments. Also in the News Sentinel all week, we'll have you covered on Wayne TV on the TV side as well. But for Blake, I'm Glenn, and thanks for logging on to Wayne.com.